giant factories, the harnessing of power, an enormous output of hard goods, these are the familiar symbols of the Industrial Revolution. But no less important is the human turmoil that resulted when this new order polarized the classes. The industrialized workers found themselves with regular jobs, but the labor was deadening, often demeaning. The lives of these citizens were narrowed with only limited access to education, art, music, literature, all the passions of the spirit. Willa Cather, who began writing early in this century, was one of those troubled by the fact that the average person no longer experienced the dramatic challenges of the American frontier. The expansive vision that characterized many of the pioneers was shrunk by an increasing emphasis on material acquisition and by the restrictive pieties of small-minded people. It seemed as though a distorted sense of virtue was threatening to choke out life's adventure and romance. In her novels and short stories, Lola Cather often wrote on a theme of artistic sensibility and the way it can be smothered by society and its narrow standards. Most of all, she mourned the tragic loss to the world when a talented, sensitive child was denied the chance to develop. She wrote that there is no work of art so big or so beautiful that it was not once all contained in some youthful body. Her story, Paul's Case, which we're about to see, was first published in 1905. It's a story of longing. It tells of a young man who yearns to escape the frustrations of the daily round and enter the bright world of high art. In a way, he does succeed. But Miss Cather knew Escape from small-mindedness is not easy. Well, what have you got to say for yourself, young man? Well, go on, speak up. I'd like to come back to school. You would? Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you aware of the charges against you? I think so. You think so? <clears throat> Paul is a constant source of distraction in my class, and he distracts those around him. Uh, 
As an instance, the other day I was uh, at the board trying to explain or diagram the Pythagorean theorem, and uh, there was muttering and mumbling from Paul's area, and soon he had the entire class in, uh, Excuse me. I think we're being a little hard on Paul. Well, it's true he doesn't always pay attention in class and causes other little commotions, but that's not all bad. I, it's a form of boyish mirth. You see, the architectural details are quite well laid out, and they go toward this end. Paul. I mean, there are other students sometimes. Excuse when I'm me. Get... I would like to speak directly to Paul, please, since he's present. Paul, we each seem to have our difficulty in dealing with you. I will speak to the point of my difficulty. I think you remember a week ago when I asked you to diagram a simple sentence on the blackboard. You made a terrible mess of the sentence. I chose not to reprimand you in front of the class, but to go up to you and gently guide your hand to correct your errors. You replied with a vehement... Don't do that. Don't. You say don't to me, you did it wrong. Don't you say don't to me. Don't do it like that. Is that any way to speak to your teacher, young man? I don't know. I... I didn't mean to be polite or impolite either. It's a sort of way I have, I guess, of just saying things, regardless. Regardless of other people's feelings. I suggest it's a way you'd best get rid of, young man, and quickly. Yes, sir. You can go now.
sure that you get one of these in every program. Perfect. You're late again. How is it that every boy gets here on time except you? I was here. In fact, I was early. Only, I was upstairs. <sighs> That's no excuse. Just see that it never happens again. It won't. Five minutes, and then we'll open up. Hey, what's upstairs? Paintings. Beautiful paintings. Of what? Landscapes and people. You got in trouble for that? It's worth it. It's splendid up there. Yeah, well, you wouldn't catch me looking at no paintings. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for the 50 cents they give me. Don't you like the music? Nah. Don't you like seeing all the fine people? What for? I ain't one of them. Come on, before he gives it to you again. Dr. Mayfield's seats. He gave them to me. Follow me, please. Right this way. New program, sir. Enjoy the concert.
charming young lady said she would go to the ends of the earth to hear you sing. Oh, you already have, my dear. <laughs> Lotte, the Skansko looks so much more beautiful than in Salzburg. Then what they are doing in Pittsburgh? Oh. <laughs> Boy, oh, out, out with you. Where have you been? The concert went long tonight. You have any idea what time it is? I hope you've done your homework. Yes, sir. You're starting fresh, and you're going to do your best. Well, aren't you? I'll try. Well, that's all I ask. If not for me or for yourself, then think of your mother. I don't remember her. Yeah, she was a fine woman. Sensitive and cultured. She appreciated beauty. She made this sampler. I know. You know what it means, feed my lambs? Yes, sir. That's what I did. I fed my lambs. Suppose father heard. Swenson, what's the matter with you? Too damn unfriendly to say hello? Think you're better than everyone else? Oh, dear. I got you reinstated in school by the skin of your teeth. You better change your manners. Hey, you better be careful, young man. <laughs> Could at least teach him to say thank you. Morning. I'm planning to make six of my Morning, five Sam. For the Morning, sir. This year. Paul? I could have made that many last week. How's the little one? He gained two pounds in the last week. Two pounds? My, my. How are things down at the mill? Oh, couldn't be better. Well, any day now, I expect to hear you've been made supervisor. <laughs> Your boss still off on his yacht? In the Mediterranean. He takes two stenographers with him, just like a floating office. Who knows? One day you might have a palace and a yacht. That son of yours might inherit an empire. Would you like to roast? Very tasty. It must have been expensive. Not too. I did what you told me. I complained to the butcher. <laughs> I said 29 cents a pound is highway robbery, so he gave it to me for 27.
I made your favorite for dessert. It's a rhubarb pie. None for me tonight. No room for it. George said if I came over, he'd help me with my geometry. Could I have a dime for car fare? Could I? What's the point of your being an usher if you don't save your money? I try to. Where does it all go? I don't see why you can't study with someone who lives in the neighborhood. I don't know anybody. You mean this boy, George, who lives on the other side of town, is the only one who can help you? Next time, I expect you to pay for it yourself. Else find someone around here to help you. What is the matter? Nothing. I, I lost my breath. Oh, Marguerite is ill. Oh. No, it is nothing. Don't stop. I'm afraid you are ill. No, really, it is nothing. Do go into the other room. I shall be with you presently. We had better go. She always wants to be alone when she feels like that. Yes, do go. I shall be with you presently. Mademoiselle Gautier. Marguerite. Why such devotion? I'm irresistibly drawn to you. I wish that I could be your friend or relation that I might take care of you. Charming boy. Take this flower. Bring it back to me. When? When it is faded. Magic in the air tonight. Did you feel it? It was as if Dumas himself had breathed every word of it to me. Tell from the way you spoke, your every gesture. I felt as if the ghost of the Comedy Francaise were on stage with us tonight. Molière, Racine, Corneille, the divine Sarah Bernhardt. Sarah herself. Oh, well, come on, I gotta get changed for the second act. So you saw the first act? The last part. How was I? You were brilliant. <laughs> brilliant? Well, I thought so. That good. I suppose I did have a special feel for it tonight. I can tell. Here. Where's my vest? It's right here. It must be wonderful to say and do splendid things. It is. It is, my boy. That's what they call acting. 
that you'd like to get up on the board yourself someday. <laughs> no. Oh, come on, you can tell old Charlie. No, really. You don't have a great secret desire to be an actor? I just want to be here, in the atmosphere of it. Be caught up by it. Float on a wave of it. <laughs> Such poetry. It's not real. It wills under the lights. Here, help me out with my coat. Hey, Charlie, you got any lip rouge? Sure, love. Come on in. May I present Paul? I know Paul. Hi, Paul. He's a connoisseur of great art. <laughs> I admired your performance greatly. There you go. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, you're a real gent. You know, you really ought to go into the big time with that act. I want to go to New York. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Well, I have a scrapbook at home of New York. And look what I brought to show you. I've got pictures of New York. That is the plaza. Isn't it grand? And this is inside the plaza. I love those ladies. Look at those dresses. And that silver. Isn't it swell? And this. That's the wall door. <laughs> what is this? It's the Adriatic. The Adriatic? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? Then how do you know what it looks like? How can you draw something you haven't seen? I've seen pictures of it. And sometimes I dream about it. Then what you were doing just now was research. <laughs> hey, Paul, how's your research? Time, Wake up! <laughs> Cut it out. You know, you're going to flunk out. I'm not going to flunk out. Yes, you are. And what if I do? Do you think school is the most important thing in the world? I've met members of the symphony. And I might be going to Egypt or even California sometime. <laughs> I know members of the acting company personally. See? Who's that? Charlie Edwards, some dumb actor. Here, give it back. Come on, let's get out of here. to replace you. I was on time tonight. You can hang a few uniform. Where do you think you're going? Upstairs. You're not allowed up there. Why not? No excuses now. I work for Mr. Charles Edwards. Those are my orders. Out. Whose orders? 
Whose orders? Out. Charlie. Paul. You're here today early, my boy. Well, I came to see you, only, only the doorman wouldn't let me in. What's the matter? Look. Your father stopped by. My father? He doesn't think you should be hanging around us great artists. We promised him we wouldn't see you anymore. You wouldn't see me anymore. I wish you'd tell my husband what a great artiste I am, if you can find him. Look, why don't you go back to school? That way you can get a good job. I don't want a job! I just want what you have. Oh, you've really got a bad case of it, haven't you, Lynn? You left one of your school books that your father took. There's no point. You won't be needing it. I talked to the principal. You were expelled. You didn't change a bit, did you? You told me you would. They could try harder. But instead of studying, you went sneaking off to the theater. You fall asleep in class. Talk back to your teachers. What's the matter with you? You don't have to say anything. It's all decided. You're going to work. It's time you learned a few things. You started Denny and Carson first thing on Monday morning. I talked to Mr. Carson himself. He's agreed to hire you as a personal favor to me. It's a good firm. In six months' time, if you apply yourself, there'll be a chance for advancement. You don't know how lucky you are. this to the bank and leave the book to be balanced. Brothers clothing store and an action to the wall door.
Would you gentlemen please send this to my suite at the Waldorf? Yes, sir. I'd like a suite of rooms. A suite. I've come from Washington to meet my parents. They're arriving from Southampton Friday on the Helvetia. I'll pay in advance. If you'll sign the register, sir, I'll have a bellhop show you to your suite. Just this way, sir, please. some roses. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, keep the rest for yourself. Thank you, sir.
glass of champagne. Your first time in the big city? No. Uh, no, I come in here whenever I'm out of school. Uh, then you must know your way around. Have you heard about this new place over by Gramercy Park? They're supposed to have the most beautiful girls in New York. No, I haven't. I like brunettes myself. How about you? Oh, you mean women? Uh, I like all kinds. Well, that's the right attitude. Take everything you can get. No, I mean... And life's too short to waste. Drink up. Do you know how many beautiful women there are out there? And I've got to be back for class Monday morning. Like as the waves make towards their pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. What's that? Something I memorized in school. <laughs> what a card. No, no, this one's on me. Well, where are we going? To Gramercy Park before our uh, minutes hasten to their end. Come on. Oh, really? No. What's the matter? What's the matter? I just remembered. I have to meet someone. Meet someone? Now? I'm sorry, but I can't go. Well, of course you can. I'll hail a cab. No. Thank you for the drink. I'll excuse myself. Jeez, what a dud. Your 
can stop right here. I'll walk the rest of the way. It's going to snow again. It's all right. It's beautiful. 